Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Today, I want to talk to you about what it's like to be a parent of a child who has narcissistic tendencies, who may be an all-out sociopath, and what you can do about that situation. So first of all, it's important that you recognize the signs. And typically, you may not recognize them as behaviors in your child first. You might recognize them as the situations that you are experiencing with that child first. And what I mean by this is that if you feel that you are having a more difficult time raising your child, and especially if this is not your first child, you've raised other kids before, it's important that you start noticing how you are interacting with your child so that then you can push deeper and look at the child's behavior before you decide what next steps to take. The reason that that's important is because sometimes when you just assume, okay, this child is difficult, this is what I'm going to do, and and you don't recognize that this child is demonstrating narcissistic personality disorder tendencies or traits, then you can actually be reinforcing those behaviors. So as a parent who may be raising a narcissist, some of the common experiences that you're going to have is that your child is going to be demanding constant attention praise or validation. And this is separate from, this is different. And it's important that you understand it's different from a child whose love language is quality time, right? This is somebody who is going to want to be acknowledged for the things that they are doing, not on the connection they are building with you. So the demands for attention and validation, disregarding the feelings of, of others and the needs of others, including other family members and especially other children. So if you have a child who is super calloused towards their siblings, towards you, towards family pets, anything like that are indicators that there's a lack of empathy that's developing. And when it comes to this point specifically, this is a great example of what I mean by reinforcing the tendencies because actually choosing to punish or um, address that lack of empathy through harsh punishment can actually be reinforcing the lack of empathy. So again, acknowledge the behaviors of your child and the way that you are experiencing your family unit is experiencing those behaviors before you decide how to handle it. Another common experience that you may be having is the manipulation to get what they want. So if they don't get what they want from you, they go to the other parent, they go to a, an older sibling, to an auntie or an uncle. There's a lack of the enforcement and setting of boundaries, and they will constantly be using manipulation to get around those. There can also be uh, the resistance to taking responsibility for their actions or their mistakes. Again, this is another point that I just want to say, if you are creating an environment where the child does not feel safe admitting faults or mistakes because there's no outlet for correction, uh, in other words, don't do this, but you never demonstrate what they should be doing, then that is that can actually be feeding these narcissistic tendencies because the child isn't actually going to feel safe to be authentic. Therefore, they are building this mask, this grandiose uh, facade that they think you will be more readily willing to accept than who they truly are. So some of these things, again, you really need to know the environment in which the child is is living, is growing up in, and how they are internalizing, how they are interpreting, right? how they internalize that environment to themselves. Another thing is uh, the blaming of others. So it's not just that they won't take responsibility, they will make excuses or blame shift onto other people. And this is one of the most clear red flags of dealing with a narcissist. Uh, even in adults, is that this person is unable to take responsibility for their actions. They're going to blame other people for why they said something, why they reacted a certain way, why they felt a certain way. Though They're unable to own, to take ownership of things that they view or have an emotional attachment to as negative. Another thing that you're going to be experiencing, another common thing is the resistance to criticism or feedback. And this speaks to a grandiose sense of self-importance and entitlement. In other words, if they do one thing, they want to be acknowledged that this this thing that they did is the best. Nobody's ever done it that, that good. No one could ever do it that good. They not only view it that way themselves, they expect other people to view it that way and to let them know, right? They 
they will not accept criticism. They will not accept any type of feedback, whether it's constructive or not, whether it's from a peer, whether it's from somebody who's in a position of authority, they're just not going to accept that because it's not lining up with the narrative that fits this facade that they're already building. Another thing is that they refuse to apologize or to make amends for their behavior or to shift their behavior. Again, this goes back to the lack of empathy, the lack of ability to take criticism, the uh, inability to kind of see themselves and their actions as separate. So they're not able to actually go back and self-reflect on what they're doing and how that could impact other people. And so when they're confronted, they're unwilling to apologize or make amends for that behavior. They'll often react in anger or there will be a lot of hostility when they are challenged or criticized more so than just a normal, uh, especially if you're, if you're dealing with a teenager, more than that, it's every single time. It's not just that you hit them on a bad day or that they have a lot of stuff going on in their life. It's actually that this is part of who they are now. They're, they're not willing to even entertain the possibility of another outcome, of another reaction that they could have had in that moment. And for that reason, you'll often notice that they have difficulty forming and maintaining healthy relationships. It's, uh, it's often that a narcissist is either surrounded by flying monkeys, but they're constantly changing. So in other words, a narcissistic child will have lots of friends, but very it's very hard for them to keep long-term friendships. So they have a lot of people around them, but those people are constantly changing. And in other cases where children have not yet mastered the uh, art of that facade building and blending in and, and projecting uh, with enough belief their version of the story to other people, they will be isolated. So they won't have friends or flying monkeys around them at all. I've talked a lot about this in all of my videos, which is that th this is this is a skill set. This isn't just a disorder. This is that they are learning. They are getting better at telling a better lie, at manipulating a better way, at picking better, more susceptible targets, at picking better victims. And so this starts as a child when they are learning these behaviors and how to form uh, the skill sets necessary in order to attract and keep victims. Mm -hmm. So you're going to start to see these things in their infancy in your child. And especially if the child has a narcissistic parent or a caregiver, because they're going to be around someone who is demonstrating that to them ways to make this type of personality disorder not only work, but seem very attractive to them as well. Mm -hmm. So remember that whatever they start as, this is a seedling. You are seeing the the very beginning points of this in a child. So it's not fair to compare that seedling to a full grown oak, which may be what you are seeing with the, with the other parent or again, a caretaker. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But failure to address issues when you see them is a really huge issue for, and it can have lasting lifelong impacts on your child. So being aware of this stuff, being, being conscious enough to call out what is happening is really important for the health of not only your, your family unit, but for your child. Narcissistic rages are going to be very common with a child who is experiencing, who is displaying narcissistic tendencies. And there will be an over-perfectionistic uh, desire. So they must do things per with perfection. So it's a, a completely unrealistic expectations. This isn't just excellence. This isn't just wanting to do the best that they can. It's actually unrealistic. There's no way that they could even hit the standard that they have set for themselves. And sometimes this can be put on them by parents, by uh, teachers or other uh, adults in authority where you're teaching them, you have to hit this standard in order to be worthy, in order to be valued. And this child could actually be needing something that they are not getting met from one of their adults in the, in their life. But because they don't know how to articulate that, or the adult does not know how to meet that need, the child will now pursue these unrealistic expectations that the adult has set on them. And that can actually accelerate these narcissistic tendencies and the child's propensity to go towards more narcissistic behavior. And because of that, you'll see a lot of chronic lying or exaggeration, especially about their accomplishments or their abilities. 
And again, they won't be able to handle even a small tweaking of, hey, that's not exactly right. This is actually what happened. They're not going to be able to handle the actual reality. So reality is always going to be here. And the way that they interpret reality is always going to be a notch or two above that. There's also going to be this inability to admit or seek help for mental health issues. And again, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, narcissism, but it could be things like I'm not sleeping or having a high level of anxiety and trying to self cope with that, but not having the right tools. And so therefore I'm just going to make this facade. You're going to see uh, emotional exhaustion or burnout when it comes to the adults in their lives because of that. So not just you as the parent, see how their um, teachers are reacting to them. See how, see if adults are wanting to work with your child or not, because that is going to tell you whether or not just unable to handle this situation and this child specifically, or is this a common theme even among trained professionals? Okay. So now that I've covered all of the things that you should be aware of in terms of the the things that your child may be experiencing and the way that that is coming across in your family dynamic, in the atmosphere, in your home of a child who is demonstrating narcissistic tendencies, I want to tell you what you can start doing with these things. First of all, it is really important, again, to recognize that this is a problem. You are going to do everybody in this situation harm by ignoring it. If you do not get professional help to assess the severity of your child's behavior and discuss treatment options when they are small, understand that this problem is already has root systems. It's already growing. You're already starting to see some of the fruit. It is only going to continue to re reproduce or replicate itself. This is not something that you should wait on. The sooner that you can get intervention from a trained professional in this situation, the better chances of not only your child learning how to live authentically and accept who they are truly, uh, but the sooner that your house can go back to a stable, peaceful environment, especially if you have more than one child. A second thing to do is to avoid your enabling behavior. It will be natural for you to want to give in. It will be um, natural for you to just take the path of least resistance, especially again, if you do not have uh, conflict resolution skills, if you do not understand already how to set healthy boundaries. If you don't understand how to identify narcissistic behavior, you know, constantly praising them, catering to their demands, ignoring their bad behavior, um, getting your other child or children who are more amicable to just give in to that child. All of these things you're actually reinforcing and, and telling that child, you will get what you want by using this type of narcissistic behavior. So you have to be aware of your own uh, reactions to your child in this moment and to avoid enabling and furthering their behavior. One of the ways that you can do this easily and quickly is to learn how to set boundaries. Honestly, this is true for anybody, regardless of if you're a parent or you're dealing with a narcissistic boss or whoever they are to you, establishing your clear boundaries and consequences for breaking them will help your child learn appropriate behavior. Again, you need to understand the entirety of the situation. You can't just cherry pick uh, some, some behavior that you find disturbing. And so, okay, that's going to be the the boundary or the consequence, because again, your child could be telling you what they need, but not have the emotional or even linguistic capability to tell you, to describe to you what they need. And your boundary could actually be telling them that is not a need. You should not have that need. And so the child is trying to cope with the fact that they are being rejected by somebody that they think is, should be a provider to them, should be a safe place to them, should be a stabilizer in their life. And so knowing how you are reacting to their situations is just as important as it as interpreting what is happening and what your child is saying or doing. Regardless, following through with consequences is huge. Again, I've said this so many times. If you do not have consequences to your boundaries, you have a suggestion. That's not a boundary. A boundary always comes with a consequence. Hey, this is a non-negotiable for me. If you continue to do behavior that crosses that line, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. You have to be able to have clear boundaries. Again, this is for yourself first, but if you don't even know what your own red lines are, if you don't even know what qualifies as healthy or unhealthy behavior in your own life, how are you going to communicate that to somebody else? And especially 
a child who is learning how to form connections in this world. Within the family unit, that's where kids learn how to do this. They learn how to build social networks by what they are modeled in the home and by what they practice themselves with the other people that are inside their house. So this is something that has to be set up whether or not you have a child who's demonstrating narcissistic tendencies or not. The other thing is to encourage empathy, right? Again, your atmosphere in the home is teaching your children something always. And by, by teaching your children how to understand and consider others' feelings and needs before making a decision or a reaction can help them develop empathy and improve their relationship with others. And again, this is true of, of regardless of what child, type of child you have. But when empathy is valued and it is uh, rewarded, that naturally will encourage your child who's demonstrating narcissistic tendencies to move towards that. And uh, again, even if it's a fake empathy, even if they're, they, they don't actually feel empathy, they're just doing the actions because uh, they're rewarded for doing it. So it's not genuine in their heart. It still is teaching them appropriate social behavior. And that is still a starting point. Again, you should still go back to point number one and make sure that you are getting professional help in this situation. But even if there are behavior changes, that can be the start of a belief shift as well. And again, I encourage you to not only get professional help, but to continue it, right? A lot of people get a consult, they do a couple of weeks or a few months with a professional, and then they think everything's good. I'm, I'm going to take that out of my routine. And without that becoming something that is uh, not only valued, but prioritized in your time, in your family dynamics, in your schedule, all, all of the things that go around having outside help, involved in your situation it teaches all of your children no matter how many you have or what their situations are is that you don't have to do everything on your own there are other people who can come in and help us and getting help is okay and we become a better family when we have more tools when we have more information when we have more knowledge and wisdom to pull from so that we can govern our family and manage our family dynamics in the best possible way so if you are the parent of a child that you think may have some sort of narcissistic tendencies. I hope this video has helped you figure out some starting points on what you can do to truly identify it, on what you can do about it. And next week's video where I'm going to be discussing what it's like to grow up with a narcissistic sibling. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you need to know about the one thing that you have to have in order to overcome narcissistic abuse, I want you to check out this video next in which I discuss that specific thing.